This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you, uh, all of you online, to our fourth Sunday of Advent, where this morning we will be sharing with you a lessons and carols service like no other. I guarantee this is the emptiest the sanctuary has been for a lessons and carols service in a long, long, long time. But God is with us, and our hearts are not empty. They are full. So we welcome you as you worship uh, with us today. Just uh, a, a great thanks to all of those. There's a number of different readers and singers who will be sharing their gifts and their presence with us this morning. We're grateful to them. We're grateful to our technology team, to Hunt and Stump for uh, making this possible. A word on that technology if for whatever reason this morning the link goes down, just continue to try the same link again and it should uh, come back up uh, soon after, just as soon as we can possibly get it. Uh, the, the errors have been out in the internet world uh, recently, if that does happen. This morning is a special day for us uh, in one of the, the items uh, that we use in worship is essentially being commissioned this morning, the first uh, real service of this keyboard uh, since it was donated uh, by the Morgans and we give glory to God for that and they have given it in honor and memory of all of the singers and musicians through the, the centuries literally here at Long Memorial and so we commission that that instrument for God's glory and pray that people will be blessed for years to come as we are uh, today. On uh, Christmas Eve, uh, which is this Thursday night, if the weather permits, we will have a service at 4 o'clock outside. Uh, please bring a mask, and we'll be uh, keeping more of a distance than usual, about 15 feet in between uh, folks that are in your family uh, bubble so that we can sing some carols safely. That's weather permitting at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve night behind the church by the Fellowship Hall entrance. So uh, we hope that that can occur. Um, regardless of the weather, at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, we will be streaming our Christmas Eve service over the internet at this very same link. So uh, we hope that you can participate as a family. If you are watching from home, you might want to get a candle and have uh, your own candle lighting uh, experience there uh, in the midst of that service so that you can worship along with us. I want to remind everyone, well, first to thank those that have been so generous in their uh, giving and tithing to the church throughout the year. And a reminder to those uh, of you that perhaps have not uh, considered making a year-end gift, we do still have a ways to go uh, for us to meet our mission and our conference commitments. And so um, we would greatly appreciate uh, you if you could uh, be faithful in whatever you have decided to give. We trust that God will work that out, uh, but we do still have a, a ways to go. And so um, we pray God's blessing will stir the hearts of God's people and whatever is given will be used for God's glory. Uh, and so... Um, Again, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have our prelude.
During this uh, service of lessons and carols, uh, the, the scripture, God's word is proclaimed in scripture and in song and music. And uh, so we will, though, uh, still continue to light our Advent candles as we continue our celebration of Advent on these four Sundays leading up to Christmas. We will rejoice in the great gift that is ours in Jesus Christ. To help us celebrate, we light the candles of the Advent wreath. The candles signify that Jesus is the light of the world. The evergreens remind us that he is life and brings life to us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, the good news will be proclaimed in the reading of scripture and the playing and singing of carols. As we prepare our hearts, we light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Indeed, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, O Israel. Our first lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah in the ninth chapter. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from thenceforth, ever, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this.
reading from the book of Micah, chapter 5. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. third lesson is read from the first chapter of Luke. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. fourth lesson is from Matthew 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us.
The fifth lesson is read from the second chapter of Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. The sixth lesson, a scripture from Matthew, the second chapter. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the peoples together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, 
but out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, and I shall come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thus ends the reading. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star O star of wonder, star of light Star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. seventh lesson from John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading. Let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We are so grateful for the gifts, the musical gifts, the gifts of presence and word and speaking and time and, and uh, for all those who have made this service possible. And we thank God for you. Throughout this last week, we have uh, opened our church to be a space where warm winter coats are given to those in need through the Christian Help Center. This last week, we, we gave Christmas meals to over 60 people in our community, enough to eat and, and to have plenty. We also uh, said goodbye for the Christmas holiday to all the wonderful children and families in our preschool. Uh, along the way, many cards have been exchanged, encouragements have been given, gifts have been exchanged. Uh, we are spreading God's love. We want to remember in our time of prayer uh, now, um, Donna Kirst was going to be one of the readers this morning. She asked me to just relay to you. She couldn't be here. Jim and Donna uh, found themselves in, a, in all too common of a situation this week. Jim was in a meeting with someone, and uh, the following day, the person tested positive for uh, the COVID virus. And so as a precaution, they're quarantining so as not to uh, take the risk of infecting others unknowingly. So our prayers are certainly with uh, Jim and Donna and this person who came down sick with this virus. We want to also lift up Jesse Saunders, 
Connie Mundy had successful surgery this week. We want to remember Ronnie King and his family, Fran and John Westmoreland. Mary Calhoun went home from the hospital and the rehabilitation center and is getting stronger every day and our prayers are with her. We want to uh, remember Rachel Blanchard, Tanya Gentry, Ann and Ralph Lewis, Stump Brand, who is not letting chemo slow him down and uh, continues to be uh, such a great help to us. Janice Wilson, Lois Winstead, Roland Crawley, Betsy Warren, Barbara Winstead. We want to remember all those for whom this is a troubling time. Those who are spending the first Christmas without a loved one. Those who are far away from family members that they long to reach out and touch and hold. But for everyone's safety, they are having to stay separate. We pray for those who are frontline workers. We pray for the efficacy of the, the vaccine that has begun, the vaccines that have begun to make their way throughout the world, that, that we could eventually, someday, and hopefully soon, put this virus and pandemic behind us. We pray for teachers, for those who are raising children. We pray for those, uh, for, there's a family in our community who gave birth uh, just a, a little more than a week ago to a child named Nathaniel. And uh, he is, uh, was born with encephalitis, with fluid on his brain. We pray for their journey now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now I want to share with you, weaving our prayers into one, a prayer that was written by a woman named uh, Ruth Duck, uh, from her collection of prayers bred for the journey. We praise you, hidden God, that in Jesus Christ you have come to us to speak your word of love and life. Touch us with unearthly joy, like the singing of angels. Fill us with wonder, like the eyes of children. Teach us to humble ourselves before you, like the worshiping magi. May our journey to the manger be only the beginning of a lifetime of service to Jesus our Christ. Amen. And we pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. And may God bless the gifts of the faithful throughout the world and in this church. May God bless those recipients of that which we give and offer from ourselves and and may God bless us in the giving and the pondering of giving may God's light and life shine forth as we share with one another may God help us as a church to meet the missional obligations that we have decided to pursue we ask this in Jesus name amen and now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus this day and forevermore. May you have a very merry and blessed Christmas. Amen and amen.